Our satellite probes, such as the Mariner spacecraft, which photographed Venus, Mercury, and Mars, send back to Earth coded information about the planets and the sun. Satellites called IMP told us about violent eruptions of hot gases in the sun's lower atmosphere. We learn about the planets, the sun, and other stars by studying their light and other energy. But light is only one small segment of the radiation stretched out along that wide energy band called the electromagnetic spectrum. We can think of this energy as waves, like electrical ripples. In the gases of the sun, or any other star, Electrons jump around inside the atoms. As they do, they release energy. At the upper end of the electromagnetic spectrum is energy of short wavelength and very high frequency. Gamma rays, X-rays, and ultraviolet rays. Next comes the band of energy we can see, with violet light at the high energy end, then down through blue, green, yellow, orange, and red at the low frequency end. Below the red, we can again no longer see the energy, but we feel the energy as heat when we move into the infrared. And at still lower frequencies and longer wavelengths is the energy of radio waves. Energy of the electromagnetic spectrum is silent and so is space, unless we translate that energy into sound. Imagine that we could hear the energy all along the spectrum, from high energy gamma rays to low energy radio waves and back again. Something interesting happens to a packet of energy of a certain frequency when the source of that energy packet speeds away from us or toward us. This is true of X-rays, light, radio waves, and sound waves. When the source speeds toward us, its waves get bunched up. We then hear it at a higher frequency than it actually has. When the energy source passes us and speeds away, its waves get stretched out. At such times, we hear the energy at a pitch lower than it actually has. Astronomers use this effect, called the Doppler shift, to study how planets, stars, and distant galaxies move through space. With special instruments, such as radio telescopes and space satellites, they detect energy along the entire electromagnetic spectrum. With optical telescopes, they study light from the sun and other stars. But the sun also sends out radio waves, we can change these silent waves into sound and hear a flare or a sunspot or other solar activity as it begins quietly, builds to a peak, and then fades. Have you ever heard the sun? Energy from the sun drives storms in Earth's atmosphere and sets up wild electronic singing called whistlers. A lightning stroke sends radio waves crashing out into Earth's magnetic field. The crash is made up of many frequencies. 
As they speed along the great loops of the magnetic field, the higher frequencies travel faster than the lower frequencies. The sudden crash has been stretched into a long electronic whistle. Flares on the sun cause gusts in the solar wind. They rattle Earth's magnetic field and produce a cosmic symphony. Part of it has been nicknamed the Dawn Chorus. Along with whistlers and the Dawn Chorus, Earth's magnetosphere roars like a lion, and nobody quite knows why. Thank <laughs> you.